Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Kim here and today is part nine. Nine, can you believe it? Uh, part nine of our hardcover uh, book that we have repurposed and done right from scratch from cutting out the pages to where we're at now today. And today we're going to be working on the cover. Um, we're going to put some uh, covers on top of here and I'm going to talk about different types of covers and this will go into uh, this is part nine so le either later today or first thing the next day um, will be part 10 which will be um, embellishing the the edges and, and finishing the cover outside um, with different trims and stuff so I just thought I would show you this page really quickly I don't know if you remember but I had this library pocket and it was just this big pocket in the middle of the this big white page and I added the um, tag which will get embellished and finished later on it's just blank on the back and then I had shown you a corner pocket I had made uh, with book pages and what I did is I just uh, I glued it down um, just the one layer first and then I um, put a paper inside so this is going to be like a secret writing space. And then I glued a napkin over top of it. I just had a couple of pieces of napkins. And um, so I figured, ah, I'll just glue it on. It's in the red tones, which is nice. It, it matches uh, quite nicely here. So there's another uh, option for a pocket for you. And the reason I say pocket is because I only glued it down the sides so I can add something in here in, as a tuck spot. So I've got my tag in a pocket. I've got a pocket here to put something else in and I've got a secret writing spot. And this is going to get embellished even further to hold it down a little bit more. And uh, so you won't notice it unless you, you um, uh, know the book. So, so you can see that this page is building up a little bit more. And at the top of the page here, um, are staples because on the other side of here I have stapled that little piece in here. I remember I fussy cut out this thing because again it's a great big blank page so the idea is that I can I can tuck something underneath it if I want to or um, um, further embellish the page yet uh, you know I'm still working on that part of it for myself. Um, but yeah, it's a great little tuck spot. It's like a little banner. Um, you can make them out of anything, these little banners. You can make them out of some of your extra pages that you have and embellish them even further. But I had stapled it on, so I'm going to be putting some type of a lace trim up here to cover the staples on this side. And so that's why there's staples sticking out on this side. There was some writing here too that's in ink. So I'm just going to have some kind of, you know, maybe some washi tape or, or um, trim or something to cover that up afterwards. But yeah, I just wanted to show you this pocket. Um, and you saw how I made it. So it's very easy to do. And it really fills the page in nicely and gives you that secret writing space. So today is decorating the covers. Now... I like to use fabric because, you know, I have a passion for fabric and I have a lot of fabric. You can collage on here with papers. Um, you can um, not do anything at all. If you like your book the way it is, you can leave it the way it is. You could glue a frame onto the page um, and, and uh, allow for a picture to go inside of here. Um, you can embellish it in so many ways. You can use pieces of fabric to embellish, uh, which we will do in, in one of my books. And it... There are so many possibilities. Now, some people go as far as wrapping the fabric around and making corners on the inside. That's a lot of work. <laughs> and I always find that it just makes the book look thicker and bulkier um, to do the mitered corners on the inside. But it depends on what you're going to do with the book. And, you know, if you put a mitered corner on the inside, um, then you have to be prepared to cover up the not so pretty look to it. So mitered corners are not my favorite. I have done them in the past, but they're still not my favorite thing to do. Um, I prefer to use smaller pieces of fabric and then embellish it further. So just to give you an example for this book, I have this fabric and what I did is I um, backed it with felt. Now this is an iron-on felt, which I totally love this felt. Um, you can pick it up at your, your um, local fabric store by the yard or by the half yard. It, it's certainly very economical 
um, because you, you get so much of it and, and you can cover many books or many pieces and there's other uses for it too. Um, but I like it that it gives this, this thin cotton, a heavier feel to it and a little bit of a cushion to it. Um, you can certainly use regular felt inside or, you know, maybe you have an old, um, um, tea towel or quilt or something or anything that you can give it a little bit of extra thickness um, just to um, you know because the, the cotton is so thin but it's personal preference but this one I stitched in um, you you can uh, like I ironed it on first and then stitched around you you can glue it down on the inside um, you don't have to use a felt on the inside it's again up, entirely up to you but this one I stitched in and I made this cover on purpose. Uh, the book is 11 and a half inches, I think, or no, this one's 12 inches. Yeah, this one's 12 inches. So I made it on purpose um, about a half inch shy of the edge of the book when you turn it on. It, well, maybe it'll be about a quarter by the time I, I actually put it, put it down. Um, and that's because I know I'm going to be trimming on the outside. Uh, and, and putting embellishments on the outside of this book. And I didn't want to take away from the, the beauty of this inside um, um, end page that is on both the front and the back. So I figured, well, I'll just uh, glue it on the outside only. Um, and, and this way it looks nice. It looks finished. And it will still have like some fringe or trim or lace that will be peeking out of the outside edge. But this allows me to add it on and not create too much extra bulk on the outside. So this one, um, I am going to hot glue it down. Um, because that's a very easy method uh, to quickly glue your, your pieces down. And I'm doing it knowing that... Um, all of these edges are going to be further covered, so it will uh, um, hold it even better at the end. Um, and it's a very quick method to put your book together. Now, uh, some people are going to say, well, that's fine, but um, glue is lumpy. Well, it's lumpy if you're not fast. Um, you know, if you don't uh, glue a section and press it down and flatten it right away, yes, you're going to feel the glue lumps coming through the, the fabric. Um, but another way to get rid of that is to, um, once you've got your cover on, um, you can go back with a piece of parchment paper over top of it and iron the glue flat. There'll be enough heat coming through that you can flatten it out if you've got any lumps or bumps. And yes, um, before we go too much further, yes, I do iron my fabrics. Please iron your fabrics. Don't have wrinkly looking books. I see so many people make books and their, their covers look so wrinkled. Unless you're purposely going for a wrinkled look, you know, then use wrinkly fabric that's like normally like that, like a seersucker or, or um, uh, smocking fabric or something like that. But otherwise, like take the effort to iron your piece of fabric. Um, cause there's nothing worse than seeing a beautiful book made and it's got, it's full of wrinkles. So do take the time to do that. You, you know, it, it makes me think of a little story and I can tell you this story. My, one of my nieces and I won't, I won't give her name. Um, <laughs> she used to only iron the fronts of her shirts and, and, um, and I said, well, why wouldn't you iron the back of it? And she said, well, you know, why iron the back? If I'm walking away from you, I don't care what you see at the back of my shirt. <laughs> And, and I said to her, I said, well, I said, that might be okay if you're walking past me, uh, although I will comment. Uh, I said, but what if you're walking past a cute boy and he looks at the back of your shirt and goes, oh my gosh, she must've slept in those clothes. Then she got really upset with me. And she said, well, fine then. And she went back into her room and ironed the backside of her shirt. And, you know, I think she's changed since then. <laughs> I think she always irons, but it just made me laugh that she only ironed the front because that's, she didn't care what people saw when she was walking away. But yeah, I do care when I see your books, I want to see them nice and smooth and, and I don't want to see creases and lines where they're not supposed to be. So yes, I iron all my fabrics before I get started. So I'm going to put this book aside and I'm going to talk about the next one. Just give me a sec here because I have them all lined up. Did I just do that? Yes, I did. I'm going to make sure that's straight again. So this is my next book and everything is teetering on the edge of my, my tables and my, 
anywhere where I can put stuff. <laughs> so this book, I've chosen this fabric to cover it because this is my antiques book and you can see everything is still in the book here. I haven't, I haven't done much to it. Um, and I still have to iron this fabric. Um, and this is upside down. So, so, um, this is the fabric I've chose and I'm going to let it wrap around just a little bit. Um, because in this case I have an inscription here, so I want to cover that. Can you see that? Where's my hand? Yeah, you probably can't see that. I think I've really teetered this a little bit. I think that's better, right? Yeah. Okay, so on this one there was an inscription in here, so I'm going to cover it a little bit on the inside of the book. I want to make sure you can see that. Yeah. It's still not quite right. Sorry about this, you guys. Okay, so I'm just going to have it wrap around a little bit here and then go around the entire book. And then hopefully I'll have a little bit left over to cut off. Now, when you're making your books, if you're using the fabric, um, make sure you keep all of these scraps because we will be using them as embellishments um, next week uh, for any other ephemera that's going in our books. So this one, um, it comes right to the edge as well. It's probably a little bit uh, taller than what I wanted. So I think I'll trim it down uh, just a little bit again because I don't mind if the edges are coming out of the bottom of the book here um, because what I will do is I will be covering with trims and embellishments afterwards. Now this one I'm going to cover with glue. Now I can use my Fabri-Tac glue. I can use tacky glue. It's whatever works for you. And, and so many people ask me and, and I really, I really don't have a favorite. I, you know, it's flavor of the month, whatever I have on hand. Uh, in this case, I have, um, some tacky glue that I'm probably going to use. Oh, I have a bottle of fabric glue on the table as well. So, so it really doesn't matter. The thing about this is the glue is going to seep through because it's just a very light cotton. It's going to seep through. But I'm really only using this uh, fabric as a base because this is my antiques book and I really, I really want to add um, some kind of um, metallic things and, and um, uh, vintage type things on the outside, which, you know, I will, uh, you, you will get to see the embellishing afterwards as well. Um, so I'm, I'm not too concerned if there is a discoloring, uh, where the, the uh, glue seeps through the fabric because it will be completely covered or, or it's just a base. So there will be some lace and some doilies and things added on top, but I do want you to see through those items and, and see the, the basic cover underneath. And this was the same fabric that I used on the inside of my book, um, to, to, um, uh, hide the um, signature binding. So there is a little bit of discolor in there as well, but again, I'm not too concerned because by the time I'm finished, you, you won't see it. So this one I'm going to glue with tacky glue or fabric glue, whichever I can reach first. And um, I'm going to wrap it a little bit around the edges, uh, knowing that I'm going to cover on the inside anyway. So, so like here, I've got a, a little piece on in the center um, yeah, I'm still not in frame, am I? I have a little piece in the center here, so I'm probably going to cover this completely with a new end paper um, design afterwards. So that's my reasoning for this one. So I'm going to set this one aside and go on to the third one. Boy, they, what a mess. Now this one... I have cut two pieces here, and this is a heavier um, upholstery fabric. So I don't really want it to cover the whole book as well. Uh, I like the fringed edge on here. And so that's going to hang over the book a little bit. And I'm going to leave it with that rough looking edge because it looks good. And I've fringed across the top and across the bottom of the book. Um, and then there is, uh, some natural fringing here, 
from where I cut it and I took away the threads, but that's just going to get glued down. I'm going to probably cover this uh, binding with lace, um, but I actually don't mind that you see the original uh, book and I love the, the gold that's here. This is that uh, Crafters uh, Revived uh, Victorian uh, Crafts. So I'm, I may just leave the, um, the uh, spine showing all together and just have the fabric cover hanging over the top. So I may have to trim this back a little bit when I'm actually doing this book. Um, again, I left a little bit at the top and the bottom knowing that I'm going to further add trims and embellishments. And like I said, I do have the option to cover the spine with some lace or trim because uh, the reason I'm showing you this as a piece is because sometimes you don't have a big enough piece to wrap all around, but you like a fabric and you want to use it. Um, this is an alternative for you. And this as well, I will probably hot glue um, because I'm just gluing this onto the book and I'm not worried about being, it being perfect. It's kind of like... Um, an embellishment in itself. And so, so I think I'll just trim a little bit more down the side here to, to make it a little less on the spine or, or wrapped around the spine. So when I cut the fabrics, like you can see, this one's already cleaned and, and it's ready to go, except now I'm going to cut it even shorter. But when I cut the fabrics, you know, they have strings hanging out of the edges and bits, and I want to fringe them. Like, especially this one here is where I cut uh, and it doesn't have any fringing, fringing to it. Well, it's winter here in New Brunswick, and I don't know about you, but everything is staticky. I take a piece of, this is just a wine label. My husband makes wine, so I have no shortage of these labels ever. And I just, um, I just make a little sticky thing on my desk here, and I just fold it under to hold it in place. And I pull the threads and stick them on there. Um, because when it's so staticky like this, they, they stick everywhere and you can't get them off your fingers or you can't throw them in the garbage easily. And so I just start pulling threads. And yes, sometimes I do keep these threads, uh, if I'm doing a lot of, uh, thread pulling, but for this, I don't need very much. Um, so I'm just going to pull a couple more threads out and you can see how nicely this is already starting to fringe. And usually the fringe is a good indication to tell you of how straight you've cut your fabric. <laughs> um, so then you may have to, sometimes your fringe is shorter on one side and longer on the other. You may have to go and give it a little bit of a trim off the edge. And then going the other direction is not as easy. Um, so these are the, the um, uh, one is called the warp and one is called the weft, I guess is how you would say it some threads come out really easy. Now these are very silky, these ones. So I, I just padded into that. And you, you know, you could use some labels, whatever you have on, even some packing tape. You can just take a piece of packing tape and, and run it down there just to further fringe your edges and, um, um, get rid of any loose threads that are, that are hanging around. So this is I'm pulling way too many at once. I sh pr probably should pull only one with this fabric, but here we go. So you can see that the edge now is getting all nicely fringed naturally, which is one of the reasons I like using a heavier upholstery fabric because you can really um, make a nice finish to the edges. And then that sits on the edge of your book very nicely and, and looks really sharp. So that's the way I do that one. But again, this one is too long, so I'm going to trim it down. Because I don't want it hanging over the edge of the book. But because I have just nicely fringed this piece, this becomes a nice piece of trim to use on your books. And I can further uh, take this little uh, edge here and trim off or, or pull some of those threads as well. You can see they're sticking to me. Um, that's the only thing I don't like about this time of year is everything is so staticky and I'm just pulling them out. So when people tell me, well, that's fine. I can't afford nice trims and expensive trims. 
uh, this is a very easy way to make a beautiful trim. I'm fringing it on both sides. And you can stitch beads down the center if you have some beads. You can add another uh, trim on the inside. You can layer these up. Now I didn't make this one very wide because I'm just doing this to cut off the edge of the um, the fabric for, for the book. But But I could have made this a lot wider to get a lot more... Um, of a real fuzzy frim, uh, trim on both sides. Fuzzy frim, a fuzzy trim on both sides. <laughs> Sometimes my words don't come out so easy. But even this in itself is a beautiful trim that you can use on, on a book. Uh, you know, I could even further enhance what I've got here by adding this on top of it. Doesn't that make a difference already? Can, I hope you can see that. So I could glue this down on top. And it makes an even nicer trim on the edge of the, the book. And then add some beads along the side here or some other type of braided finish, uh, which we're going to do in part part nine. But this is just giving you one idea of, of how you can repurpose this trim. This is going to be on part of my uh, embellishments for my book. So I'm keeping this aside for that. So the, going back to the one where I just cut off that little edge piece, of course, now I have to go back and, and uh, finish all this. I see I pulled some threads there. And just pulling it back. Sometimes they come out so nice, and other times they're, it's a little bit of a struggle. But you can't get this off your hands. That's why I use this, this tape so that I can uh, push it down into the tape. I hope you can see this well enough. Okay, I pulled a couple more there. Okay, I'm just going to get that out of the way. So you can see how handy this can be just using a piece of packing tape or uh, an old label that you, you may not use. Or in, this, in my case, I have so many of these. But it's a great way to catch all those threads and more. I use it too on my, um, by my sewing machine for when I'm cutting threads off of my projects as I'm sewing. Because this time of year, that stuff sticks to you no matter what you do. And, and you, you can't get it into the garbage. So I've trimmed this down a little bit more. So this is more in line with, with my book. So you can see that it comes just to the edge here. Uh, and that's because I'm going to either trim it further or I'm going to wrap something around it afterwards. Um, and it gives a nice finish on the edge of the book here. Um, to that I don't have to do anything to it. I can leave the trim just like that. Uh, but knowing me, I'm going to add some extra braiding in, on top of it yet as well. So that's ready to go. This will also get hot glued down because I like to get things done fast. And if the glue is lumpy underneath when I'm done, I will just take a piece of parchment paper and an iron and iron it flat. So that's that. So let's get started. I'm going to get this one out of the way. And go back to the original book here. And this one I'm going to start by... Oh, one thing I forgot that I should do first is find the center of my book. I'll get this out of the way. And I'm going to turn it upside down on the center. And do you remember the, the ends of the, the spine fabrics? I'm just going to move you over a little bit this way. To make sure you can see. Okay, so you remember this, this was the end of the spine when we put the spine in. So I'm just going to take some tacky glue and glue that in. Or glue it to the outside. Because this book, I'm... Oh, wrong one. This one's almost empty. 
I use a, um, I think it's an icing sugar bottle. You can pick these up at the, at, at, um, um, okay, this is called sugar. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't read it. But you can you can pick these up at the at, at your local craft store or Michaels. Oh, of course, just because I now I had a really rusty nail on on the inside of this, and it's still leaving rust. I'm not concerned because the fabric is dark, and it's just to glue it down. But I can't seem to get it started here. And I'm just going to... Arm is in the way, sorry. Grab a... You can see that it's quite rusty. And I sh should have used a steel pin, but... Ooh, that's yucky coming up. What not to do on camera. Okay, it's not going to work for me today. I'm going to use my fabric tag, which is right there too. I'll fix that up and be back using it again shortly. <laughs> That's a better shade, isn't it? And I'm just spreading this glue out. And pressing that spine fabric into the glue. And I don't worry again that this is 100% perfect because it's going to be inside the book. Now, some people don't trim them these. Some people just cut them down to the book and then fray the edges just like I did with the fabric, the other fabric, which is fine too. I just like to, to uh, further know that my spine is intact and going to stay there okay. This just is just reinforcement. And now I'm going to turn the book around. And hope that, yeah, you can see that. Okay. And again, a little bit of Fabri-Tac or fabric glue. I shouldn't say Fabri-Tac. Fabri-Tac is a brand, I think. Now, this is the book that I'm completely covering the spine, so I don't worry about... Um, this showing or not being 100% perfect because you won't see it when it's completely done and you won't see if there's any glue seepage or anything in here and the thread here Okay, so we'll just leave this to sit for a few minutes. I'm going to test my, my tacky glue to see if that's working again. Okay, I'm going to use this offline and fix it offline <laughs> for my next video. Should not use a non-steel pin. And get that out of the way. And now I'm going to start to glue my book. Now, because I don't need this to go right to the edge, I'm going to stop just before the edge. And my glue gun. This is what my glue gun looks like all the time. And 
and I'm just catching the edge first and pressing it into place. This way I know there's not going to be any lumps. And you do have to work pretty fast. So I'm just going to work from this side. Can you see where I've lifted this? Yes. And I'm pressing it down as I go along so that there won't be any lumps. And like I said, if you notice the lump afterwards, you can always iron it. But this is such a fast way to get your book covered. And even though I'm just catching the book in the center, I will go back with my fabric tack or the hot glue and glue this down afterwards. This is just to get it held onto the book itself. Now this will use about three to four glue sticks to do this. I hope this isn't too boring to watch. Like I said, this is just to hold the, the fabric in place. Until I get to the other end, then I'll put a much better dollop of glue. Now I'm going into the spine itself. So many people try to cover a large area and then that's where you run into where the glue hardens before you actually can press it into place. Now I'm getting some of my pages caught here. And I'll put a little bit down the spine again in that little spot, that little indent. Yeah, nice and flat. You don't feel any lumps.
And we're getting close to the end here. This is looking good. I'm getting excited about this book. Oh, I have so many threads, uh, glue threads hanging. And that's easy to fix with a hair dryer. If you have a, a hair dryer, you can just go back and catch all, and if there's any threads hanging from the, you know, the glue strands. Sorry that this is boring. I wish I could tell you another story, but I don't have one handy right at the moment. <laughs> now I've got a little bit overhanging here. I'll probably just trim that off afterwards. It's um, hard to completely measure how much to leave you know you you think you've measured it good but the fabric does stretch as you pull it and glue it I have one little lump there I'm just going to press it down a little bit more good And once the book is done, you will have no idea what went on inside of there. I hope some of you got to watch my um, uh, Forgotten Friends video that I did for Kara Brandon's uh, challenge. There were some great embellishments that I made that are probably going to get used in this book. Um, they turned out really cute, so I'm going to incorporate some of those into this book. Now, before I get right to the end, I'm just going to trim this little piece down here with my scissors so that it's, um, I think I'll just take off. There's like a little green, little green edge on this. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm just going to take it off at that point because it gives me a nice straight edge to work with. So there now it's sitting nicely where it's not over the edge of my my book and I don't mind if there's a little extra gap here or a little gap here I mean it's going to happen if I didn't put it on perfectly straight right at the beginning you're going to have a little bit of shifting as you go along especially when you're pulling the fabric and straightening it as you go but all of that is going to get covered with trim you're not going to see that when you're finished Oop. Now, in this case, I've got a big lump right there. And that's on my glue gun. Let me just take that off. There we go. So yeah, any glue strands, if you have any left over when you're done, you can just take your hair dryer across them and, and get, get rid of them. So that's the book. Now I'm just going to, I have a lot of things loose in the book. So the, the, uh, <laughs> I don't want things falling out and just giving it a bit of a shift. So it's starting, you see, my book is alligatoring here a little bit only cause I still have lots of papers in here that don't belong in here. <laughs> And I will make a, a, a sorry tie to, to wrap around it. But now it's nicely on the book. I'm very happy. I think there's maybe one little lump here that I will um, take the iron to. Um, 
and just maneuver it down as I go along. You could probably use a heat gun, although I would really be cautious because um, you could so easily scorch your fabrics. So I just use parchment paper and an iron, and then I will just give it an iron to flatten out any of that hot glue that might be lumpy. But so far, there's nothing in here. All I feel is the felt, and it's looking good. Um, and now I'm just going to go around all the edges and glue all the edges down in my book. Now I'm not going to do the whole thing on camera because that's um, painful. But I'm just going to show you that I'm going to glue. And I could use fabric tack too, but since I'm on a glue uh, roll, I might as well use my glue gun. And it's okay if it seeps out or if it leaves uh, marks here because, again, we're going to cover that with trim. You're not going to see that when, when we're completely finished. So it is seeping out a little bit. I just roll it off with my finger because by the time I'm done this, it, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be beautiful. And no one knows except for you and I right now uh, what's going on on the inside of this book. So this will just roll off with my finger. And what doesn't, doesn't matter. But this way I know that all the edges are glued down completely. And even if they aren't, you're still going to catch them with the trim. This is a low temp glue gun, but I do use a hot glue gun as well. And that's, that's pretty nicely glued in there. Now this is sticking out past the book a little bit, so I'm just going to trim it down. Am I on camera here? And so coming back here, I'm just catching that again. And I'm not going to do the whole book, but you get the idea. I'm just going to go around, around the, the uh, seam, it's the uh, spine itself. I'm just going to open it up to do it until it's completely covered. So you can see the top of the book where the spine, um, where we covered the spine and I wrapped it around, which is a nice finish to it because once I have the trim on, that's all you're going to see. If you can see my finger around it, that's all you're going to see. So it's very nicely finished there. And once we have the trim on, the, the burgundy will be a nice finish to the top of the book um, all the way around. So that's that one done, uh, except that I'm going to do the rest of it off camera. And, so, well, you know what, since I've got the hot glue gun on, I'm going to do the next one here. I will do one side and then do the rest off camera because the one side is cut down to size. Is it this one or this one? No, oh, that one's still long, this one. And I wanna make sure, yeah, we've got the right side. And my book is upside down. I'm going to put it like that. Making sure I'm going the right way. Yes. Okay, so I do want this one to just peek over the edge a little bit. So if you can see where the edge of the book is, I'm trying to show you here. This is not easy to do with these books because they're so big. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to have it peek over the edge just a little bit. So that's the part that I'm going to glue down first. 
and I do glue in small stages because you don't want your glue hardening before you actually get it pressed into place. Again, I, I'm sorry for the quiet bit here. All right, so that's glued down on the side. And then I do the same process by pulling and stretching and gluing at the same time. Now, if you find that the glue is hardening for you too fast, another thing you can do is just do smaller bits. You don't have to do it all the whole length of the book at the same time. You could just do a little section here and glue it and then lift and then yeah, continue on that way. I have so many glue threads here. And you don't have to glue it complete. This is just to hold it in place on the book. You're going to have it much better glued all around the edges uh, anyway. But this way you won't have any shifting in your book. So you can see that I was just doing spots. I'm not doing perfect lines um, on this part. Uh, not the same as when I did the edge. I'm supposed to be using my glue pad, but I'm not. And I can go back and iron this if there are any lumps. But so far it's uh, adhering very nicely. And so on and so forth. I'm going to do the rest of this off camera. But when I get to the edges, I'm going to treat it exactly the same way as I did the other book. I'm going to go around and catch the edges underneath. Knowing that I'm probably going to be adding all kinds of trims and stuff on top anyway. But yeah, so I just have a little bit more to do here on this side. And then I will, um, that was just some strings hanging here. And then I will do the same. I will prepare this side for, for the other side of the book. So I'm just going to pause the camera to do that part. But the one last thing is to do the third book. And I'm going to take all this extra stuff out of here. You can see I have way too much stuff here. I also had a little accident with this one when, when I was getting everything ready. It all fell out. Everything on my desk is teetering now. And so this one, I'm going to open up the book. do this with you in camera. We've got glue here. Okay, so I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac because my <laughs> tacky glue is a mess. And my glue spreader. 
and I'm not worried about the edges on this fabric because I'm going to do a whole new, um, probably a whole new um, end page on the inside here. And I've gone, I've taken the glue and I've gone around the edge of the book as well. And I'm just going to fold that into it. And like I said, I'm not concerned of it seeping through because I'm going to be doing other things to this cover. If you don't want the glue to seep through to your your uh, fabric if you're using uh, a cotton or a very light fabric then I definitely recommend adding some felt on the inside of your fabric or something thicker so that you don't have that you can also put your glue down and spread it really really well and just leave it for a few extra seconds just to uh, adhere it uh, a little bit better to the book now I'm going to run into a problem where this is wet um, and I'm going to be closing the book. So I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to pause the camera and I'm going to come right back. Uh, by then I'll have the other two book covers done. And then I will uh, finish showing you how I do this one. Okay, I'm just going to pause for a second. And I'm back. So I realized uh, after I glued this little piece on the inside tab here or on the inside of the page here I realized I was going to run into the same problem with it being wet um, if I tried to do this and then wrap around so I did this uh, in between while I was I was working on the other books I did this and this is now dry as well and this is using the uh, fabric glue and you know sometimes you guys ask me uh, this is uh, craft medley fabric glue it's a very inexpensive glue that I I pick up at our local um, Canadian dollar store it, it's not the Dollarama it's Canadian dollar store but fabric medley or craft medley is available I think probably in the United States as well but it's it's just like Fabri-Tac or it's a, a um, kind of a thinner tacky glue and so you could use tacky glue as well I've used it I, I just use whatever I have on hand and it's flavor of the month for me all the time I, I don't I don't pick and choose. I just spread the glue and allow it to dry. But what I noticed is um, as I spread the glue and, and it's not coming through, there's a couple of tiny little spots that I can see, but really it's not coming through on here at all. I don't normally work with black fabric only because I don't like all the little bits. And I had sparkles on my desk the other day for making those um, uh punches or using the punches with that fa uh, sparkly fabric and so not everything's got sparkles on it but uh, so I left off here where I, I went as far as the spine because I wanted to show you how I did the spine and it's the same thing all I did is I took the the uh, fabric glue spread it out this is a very uh, thin bodied glue and I'm really not too concerned if it adheres perfectly again because I'm going to trim it with things. Um, oh, everything on my table is teetering. Um, I'm looking forward to getting all these books done so that I can have more room here. Not that that's 100% possible. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of pushing it into the crevices of the spine. So that there isn't a lot of glue um, blobs or anything, you know, it's it's really because uh, you just don't want it to seep through on onto your uh, fabric if possible. And yeah, you should if you're going to work with certain fabrics that you're really nervous that it's going to come through. Then yeah, I would work with a base fabric underneath it. So all I'm doing is pressing that into the spine crevices there I've got glue glue strands from my glue gun on here I'm gonna have all kinds of things stuck to this book before it actually gets finished and now I'm going to do the same thing along here along this spine
Now, some people do the whole book at once. I, I don't. I like to work it in as I go along uh, and try to get rid of any, you know, creases that aren't in the, that are in the fabric. And sometimes, uh, you know, I will even wait a, a minute or two before I put the the, the um, fabric down just so it gets a little bit more dried and a little bit more tacky. But I'm spreading the glue out here pretty good. So I'm not too worried about that. And like I said, I'm not worried about the fabric um, having glue come through, although it, it isn't, which I'm really surprised because it's very thin. This is just a cotton broadcloth, like a quilting cloth fabric. So I hope you can see what I'm doing here. So you can sort of see where it's wet. And I'm just gently pulling the fabric and pushing it into place. And just pushing it into that spine. So by doing that, I see that a little bit of glue has come through the fabric. But hopefully, like I said, by the time I'm done, you won't see it anyway. And a little bit more at a time. If you don't have one of these, they are so handy. And I picked mine up at Dollarama in the makeup aisle. Um, I don't understand how you would use this on your face, but um, it's been many years since I wore that kind of makeup that I would have to worry about it, how to use it. But apparently it's the in thing, but it's great for spreading glue. So foundation, glue, Crack filler. I'm sure it's good for all that stuff. <laughs> and gently pulling again. I'm going a little bit off kilter here. Yeah, it's not coming through, so I'm happy about that. It's just a couple of little spots where I can feel the dampness on this side. Um, but, but for the most part, it's not coming through. I'm just going to go back in that spine a little bit with my fingers. And one last section here. I hope this wasn't too painful a video to watch. Um, this next part after this, part 10, is going to be where we um, do the trimming on the books. And I've got several different methods of trims to show you. Some are um, quality trims that I buy and some are trims that I make. Feeling pretty good. So this is going to be wet, but I'm going to prop the book up somewhere so I can let it dry. Then I'll just finish off the rest here for you to see. So I know I'm going to wrap this around, but I really don't need that much fabric and it'd be such a waste when I can use it for embellishing my book. So I'm just going to take my, my ruler and maybe I'll do it from this 
that way so you can see a little bit better. Sorry about the glare, but I can't do much about that. Now I'm worried this is going to slide around on me. Yeah, it is. Okay, I need something to hold this. There we go. There's my paperweights. So this is just to hold the book in place. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just lining it up about a half an inch is what I, yeah, it's maybe a little bit better than a half an inch. Maybe about three quarters of an inch. And I have my rotary cutter. You can, you can do this with a blade too. It's just a little harder. You can cut it with scissors, but I have my rotary cutter and this is a rubber mat. So I'm just going to cut the fabric off. And again, this will be pieces that I use for embellishing inside the book next week. Oh, these books are going to slowly get done, aren't they? just seems like it's it's taking forever I guess it's uh, five weeks now that I've been working on these so again spreading a little bit of glue here I don't want to put too much um, and I'm going to spread it this way so that it goes towards the fabric And this is where it's a little bit heavier. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going around the edge of the book. I hope you can see that. Just catching the, the edge there at the bottom. Now, I didn't have to make it wrap around, but um, I just did. I don't have a real explanation for it, other than I'm going to be covering the book on the inside anyway, so... Okay. It just also secures that I know everything is held together where, where it's glued right on the inside of the book. The paper and glue probably glue together better um, or much better than, than what the, the fabric and glue and, and um, the hard book cover would glue, I think. Does that make sense? Um, so I think this just further reinforces that it's uh, right around the whole book. It's not going to come off so easily. And I am going to cover this with a pretty paper. I was going to keep this, but like I said, I, I uh, have the inscription on the one in the front. So I think I'm just going to cover it completely on both sides. And then I do have two pieces of this paper that I can use inside the book itself. Okay, lots of fuzzies going on here. So I'm just going to spread that out a little bit more press that into place and then I'm going to prop it up somewhere to dry. So that's it for that book. Um, the spine looks good. Um, it's looking good on the outside, but it does have to dry somewhere. So I think I'll just leave it sitting somewhere like this where, where it can, um, have everything air out because the first side is done already. And, um, as long as I have something inside here where the edge I just glued doesn't touch. So stick my stapler in there so it won't uh, go back together in any way and I'll just leave it sitting like this on its side to dry so going back to oops, going back to the other books now off camera I hot glued this on except I didn't glue my edges so I'm just going to catch those edges now to show you what a mess I have here I really need a bigger, bigger table space, not, not a bigger table, bigger table space. Okay. And just catching that with my glue. Now, again, this little piece here is just a little bit long for me. So I'm just going to take my scissors and shave it back a little bit. And I don't care if it's not perfect because the, the trims that are going to cover it. I 
I just didn't want all that overlapping on the book. Now there's so many ways and now I've done most of this. Yeah, this is all done. Um, oh, I didn't do the bottom here. There are so many ways to embellish this. Uh, I could go on for hours and, um, I will show you the ones that I, I do, of course. And as I go along, you'll see other books that I do and how I've embellished them. And, and I will talk more about how I embellish my books in the future. I haven't gone into that as much. Um, you know, I just mostly said, you know, decorated with laces and trims, but, but now that you've made a book with me and you see my, my fabric process, and th this isn't the only way to adhere fabric to a book. Like I said, you can do mitered corners. Um, you, you can, uh, leave it loose along the spine. You can just decorate with spot decorations of fabric using snippet rolls and things, but this is the way I like to do them. It may not be the correct way for everybody. It may not work for everybody, but it, it's what works for me and what I like. And in this case, I'm still not sure whether I want to wrap this with some other fabric. I think as I get closer to putting, uh, getting this book finished, I'll have a better idea, but yeah, I still have to go along the edges. Um, yeah, this one is lifting here cause I didn't go quite to the edges. So I just have to go along the edges here and, and, uh, glue that down, but you don't need to see me do it. You know what, a, how I'm using the glue gun and, and same with up here. There's a few spots where I haven't glued it perfectly. So I will do that off camera. So that's the second book. And the third book was the one where I did with the felt underneath. This looks good. There's a little bit of spots here where there's a little bit of glue showing. But again, once we start putting trims and embellishing this further, we're not going to see that. I like this one. It feels nice and thick um, and, and comfy. So, so it's looking good. Um, again, didn't come quite to the edge there. But again, the trim is all going to cover that. So I'm really pleased with this cover. No lumpy glue bits. Um, there was one spot, but I can't even find it now. Well, maybe it's right here, right here a little bit. So I can take some parchment paper, lay it down over top of this and just take my iron and just push down and smooth it out as much as I can so that it stays nice and flat. But that's the three books covered. That gives you some different ideas of what you can do and how you can use different scrap fabrics. And I'm going to go on now to um, gather some stuff for part 10, which will be doing the trims and edges on our books. So I hope this wasn't too, um, you know, like watching paint dry, boring. And uh, sorry that I had to put you through my tacky glue. I did clean it up while it was off camera and it's working good now. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, so that's my three books for now and I will see you in the next video. Okay. Bye for now.